Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceeded from the Lord. We cannot speak unto thee, bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee. Take her and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. The same was true of Jacob when he was to take a wife. His mother instructed him to go to his father's land and take a wife. Jacob heeded the advice and ended up marrying a girl from his mother's family who was of God's family. So the family of God was also established in his own case. How Jacob ended up marrying two blood sisters was a case of circumstance. He had wanted to marry Rachel, the second daughter of Laban, but tradition was that the first daughter must be married before the second. Secondly, the suitor had to work for the father-in-law seven years before he could get the girl. So at the end of his seven years services, he demanded for Rachel to be given to him. But big surprise awaited him. Laban, Laban told him that the first seven years was for Leah, the first daughter, who by custom must get married first. He further told Jacob that for him to have to have Rachel, he had to work for another seven years, which he did. At the end, the two sisters were given to him for marriage. In fulfillment of her destiny, Rachel gave birth to Joseph, a one-time governor of Egypt. Now, the, now note that as Jacob married Leah and Rachel, one maid each was given to them, making a total of four women who eventually became Jacob's wives. In other words, Jacob married the four women and they all bore children for him. Though Joseph was not born early, but his, his growth and power reveal that the children of God are destined. It is written thus, For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Exodus chapter 20, verses 5 to 6. Jacob had many other children, but those who came from the family of God were Joseph and Benjamin, who were both of the same mother. Let it be known to you that Rebekah, the mother of Jacob, Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist and Mary, the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, were all of the same family. They are all of God's family and were the greatest among other people. Recall what our Lord Jesus Christ said about John the Baptist, that among all men that are born of women, none is greater than John the Baptist. He however said that the least in the kingdom of God is greater than him. Matthew chapter 11 verse 11 Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Do you think that God does not see or know what is happening on earth? Belonging to the family of God is not a monetary achievement. Neither is it achieved by academic excellence, but by the divine will of God. This is why it is written in Romans 9 verse 16 thus, So then 
It is not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. God knows all things and knows who and knows those who are his. If you have read the book titled Jehovah God in Human Form, you would have had a deeper understanding of the genealogy of the family of God. You cannot understand it through thy worldly knowledge. If you really want to know the way of God, you have to forget about your academic attainment and any mundane philosophy. Were it possible for Satan to inherit this kingdom, he would have inherited it. He had tried all his powers, but it was not destined for him. Now, it has pleased God the Creator of all things to come and establish his kingdom on earth. There are many mansions in his eternal kingdom, implying that wherever you find yourself, be happy and contented. When you ask God to give you something, you may receive the wrong gift, thereby not allowing his will to manifest, for everything is predestined. Take the case of the children of Israel when they were led out of the bondage in e of Egypt. They asked Samuel the priest to give them a king. They disturbed him so much that he became offended. However, God consoled him and pushed Saul to them as a king. Saul was not of God's family. Brutally dealt with the Israelites. Saul, who was not of God's family, brutally dealt with the Israelites. Recall that it was written that the scepter shall not depart from Judah. Genesis 49 verse 8 Judah, thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise. Thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. This shows that the house of Judah is the ruling house of Israel. Jesse happened to come from this house. To show God's displeasure with Saul, the first day he was to lead the Israelites into a war. This, this garment tore. His garment tore into four parts. This was just during the preliminary preparation for that war and revealed that he did not live by the ordinances of God. You may need to know that Saul did not enjoy the throne till the end because it was not meant for him. On the other hand, David was born from the destined house of God, enjoyed the kingly throne when he ascended till the end. God revealed to Samuel to go to the house of Jesse for a king had been chosen from that house of Israel. Samuel went there and related his mission to Jesse, who paraded all his grown-up male children, but God did not choose any of them, since he could not imagine how God could take the little David in preference of the grown-ups. Jesse told Samuel that he had no more children at present to present to present. However, Samuel asked whether those were all the male children he had. Jesse replied that the last one called David was a mere child who knew nothing, but Samuel insisted that he should be brought and once David stepped out, the Spirit descended upon him. He was there and then chosen and anointed. Saul was a mundane king, not ordained of God, since he did not come from the family of God. 
he was only reaping from where he did not sow. King Saul and his three sons were killed in one day. Now you only hear of King David, but the house of Saul was wiped away. 1 Samuel chapter 31 verses 1 to 6. Now the Philistines, now the Philistines fought against Israel. And the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down, slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed and upon followed hard upon Saul and upon his son. And the Philistines slew Jonathan and and Abinadab and Melchizedek and Melchizedek, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore, wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw thy sword, and trust me through therewith, lest these uncircumcised come and trust me through, and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. And when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and did and did kill himself with Saul. So Saul died, and his three sons, and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. God actually has a family. You can even see that our Lord Jesus Christ came from the house of David, traceable to Jesse from the tribe of Judah. At this juncture, I remember this statement of one lawyer who asked the accusers of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star to leave Abu and his work, for if he is of God, he will stand, and he will stand the test, and of he will stand the test of time. Otherwise, he will be rooted up. Anything that does not come from God cannot last. So, do not worry yourself about anything on earth. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ said that any tree not planted by his heavenly Father will be uprooted. Matthew chapter 15 verse 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father had not planted shall be uprooted. The Father has come to uproot all that he did not plant and sweep them away. Realize that the kingship position belongs to the royal family and no amount of tricks can place you in, can place you on any throne. Know that there is no type of mundane wisdom and craftiness that can sustain you in any illegal position so nobody should be disturbed about anything recall the statement of our lord jesus christ did he not promise to come and take dominion on earth there is nothing he said which he does not accomplish or which cannot come to fulfillment this is that eternal kingdom which he promised his people this is the kingdom of the Almighty God and His Christ. By this coming, by His coming to earth and taking dominion over all creation, the world and the world and indeed the entire universe will be in perfect peace. Therefore, do not be afraid, neither should you doubt any more. No man our spirit can seize what belongs to you, no matter how hard he tries. Now the churches of the Christendom make 
this yearly visit to Israel. Make their yearly visit to Israel and to the Mount Sinai. They hope that by going to pray on the very mountain where Christ was transfigured, they would acquire the power and right of sonship of God. They assume that membership of God's family depends on these routine rites, but they have failed woefully. Take Elijah, Samuel, and the rest of the patriarchs who reigned in Israel into focus. They were sent by God, yet they were not ordained as kings and so could not reign as such. God ordained the king of kings. Joseph of Arimathea was from God's family. Who was Joseph of, Ar of, Ar of Arimathea? Who buried the body of our Lord Jesus Christ? Recall that all the disciples of Christ ran away and no person went out for fear of being killed. But Joseph of Arimathea went to the authorities and pleaded to bury the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. He took pains to wrap him with clean linen and buried him in a tomb where no corpse had ever been buried. It was this same Joseph of Arimathea that took the infant Jesus and escaped to Egypt when Herod wanted to kill him, Joseph of Arimathea was of God's family. Everything hidden must be revealed. All that were written about all creation shall come to consummation. Stop praying for one thing or the other, but wait for the fulfillment of the promises of God upon his children. Everything that was hidden would be revealed because the light itself has come. He has come to unfold all hidden things. Any person who does not come from the family of God cannot do good works because God is good. God is equally the truth, life, meekness, love, righteousness, humility and all other virtues. A son, therefore, must resemble his father. You cannot acquire anything here through your wealth or position in the world. Kingship is hereditary. Those who claim to be popes, bishops, and other dignitaries have ended up not practicing God's teaching. What they do is to suppress others and cheat them. This they do because they are not of God's family. They force the children of God to derail from the way of God. They are claiming what they are not. They are not of God's family. This was why an angel prophesied the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ before his birth. Angel Gabriel did inform Virgin Mary that she would bear a son who shall be called Jesus. The son, he said, shall be great and shall take the throne of his father David. His kingship shall be forever. Luke chapter 1 verses 30 to 33 says, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and it shall, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. However, when our Lord Jesus Christ came, the task before him was too tough. He therefore could not physically enthroned. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not worry about such mundane ceremonies and enthronement. It was expedient for the Son of Man to suffer first 
before he mounts his father's throne. So when he had completed his assignment, he knew it was time for glory. For, for that reason, he prayed that the father should give him the glory which he preserved for him before the foundations of the world were laid. These words, St. John chapter 17, verses 1 to 5, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes unto heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, and that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine old self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now you can understand that all your quarrels and wars, fighting for position and possessions are in vain, and in fact out of ignorance. This is the time for all for all glory and thanks to be given to whom they belong. This is the era of his glory. Why then do human beings complain that the glory is too much? Let it be known to you that there is nothing you can do now to change the situation. Read the first lesson below.